Hi, this is Islin with Thea Marketing, and today we'll be talking about how to create compelling content using Moz and BuzzSumo for engineers and scientists. Now, the best writing is found in structure, planning, and research, not a shot of brilliance or inspiration. Today, I'll show you how to easily create compelling content by using competitive research. We've created 25 blog and case study posts in the past half a year employing these strategies. So writing compelling and powerful content starts with good research. And then today we're going to be looking at Moz and BuzzSumo. So we're doing more of an interactive session this week. So first with Moz, it's an SEO software that helps with backlinks, keyword research, site audits, um, and today I'm going to show you what to use it, how, to, how we're going to use it to get the top pages of your competitors' blogs or websites. So first you just go to moz.com, make sure you're signed in, go to Moz Pro, and then go to Link Explorer under Moz Pro. Then on the left hand side, there's link research and then, oh, excuse me, and then top pages. So you want to click on top pages and then type in the root domain. So I've typed in the root domain of free websites we aspire to, free agencies, free marketing agencies that we aspire to. And that's Neil Patel. Impact Ben, which is a great uh, inbound marketing agency, and PR 2020. And they have a very unique, um, I would say, billing system in that they use points instead of, um, they, they bill you points each month instead of just straight billing you for services. So let's take a look at Neil Patel first. He has the highest authority out of domain authority and page authority out of these free uh, domains. So let's take a look at some of his top ranking pages. So how loading time affects your bottom line, affiliate marketing made simple, a step-by-step -step guide, digital marketing made simple, step-by-step -step guide. So you can see that he has some of what we would call pillar pages um, that are some of his most popular content. And then we also see a lot of step-by-step -step guides which are his pillar pages which are long um, blog posts covering every aspect of a topic. And then, let's see, there's a step-by-step -step guide to writing powerful headlines. And then, how to create the perfect call to action. So it's interesting to see what's really popular on the site in terms of backlinks and linking domains. So as I'm scrolling down through his top 50 pages, um, you can see a lot of step-by-step -step guides, so a lot of pillar pages, and then 38 content marketing stats that every marketer needs to know, so it's, um, some stats as well. So these are his top ranking pages in terms of page authority, um, and then you can see it's terms of linking domains, external links, and you can see outbound domains that the web page links to. And then you can see status code, if it's a redirect or not. Um, there's, there's all these different status codes um, that I'm not really going to get into. And then you can view, view links. So if you want to go deeper, you can see all the links that link to that uh, 
website, that web, that specific web page. So now let's flip over to BuzzSumo and see where is his most uh, shared posts online. So first you log in with BuzzSumo and these are, these are paid services and then you can go to content and web content analyzer. And so I've already put in the web content for Neil Patel here. And what's popular for him is some stats, like 17 charts that show where social media is heading. Uh, how to track and improve your rankings without spending money. So a lot of how, how um, he does things is really popular on social media. How Google's birth update will affect content marketing. Um, how to generate 100 content ideas in 60 seconds. How I grew my dying Facebook traffic. So that's, that's pretty interesting. So if you wanted to follow, um, if you wanted to follow Neil Patel's formula of headlines, you could say how to do this. Um, and I'll go into a headline section later on in the video. And then you can also, so you're on content right now. You can also click on analysis, which is pretty interesting when it comes to BuzzSumo. Um, let's let it load. So while we're letting it load, okay. So they've analyzed the top 78 articles, which had roughly 112 total engagements. And each article had roughly 1,400 engagements, which is pretty good. And then you can add comparisons. So you can look at all networks or just Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or Reddit and total engagement. And you can do that by day, week, or month. So looking back a year, he publishes between six to nine articles a month. And then you can see where his engagement is going. Overall, you can see his, like, his engagement kind of going down. Um, but let's see. Let's look at it by week. So you can analyze it by week, or you can even go down to a day level, which will take a little while to load. So you can see that his most popular network is Facebook. Um, I wish they had LinkedIn in here too. More options. Okay, you can also export this. But Facebook is by far his biggest uh, engagement. And then average engagement by content type. A how-to article, as we saw in the content showing all of his how-to articles, were very, um, I guess, engaging for him. And the listicle was also engaging. Looks like it's going to take a bit of time to load that data by day. Oh, so you can see there's spikes of articles that are published by day, and then you can see engagement. So personally, I like to look at it by month, and that way you can see overall bigger trends like social media engagement and number of articles published per month. And so that's where competitors are doing. And then total engagement by day published. Apparently for Neil Patel, Tuesday is the biggest, best day to publish. And then you can see the average engagement by content length is roughly 2,000 to 3,000 words. And then you can see his domains. We just have one domain. We don't have any comparison domains. Um, 
and then top pieces of content by engagement. So let's, you can also add a comparison of um, others. But we can, let's go back to Moz now. And we've looked at Neil Patel. So we've learned that how-to articles are really important for him socially. And, but his top linking articles are his step-by-step -step guides, which are more pillar pages. So, and a few statistical articles. So, those are the big takeaways from Neil Patel. Now let's look at Impact Bend. They, they're great at inbound marketing strategy advice, and they're also a great agency. Um, so you can see there's, they have some, lots of numerical articles, like 26 SEO statistics for 2020, 38 mobile marketing statistics, blogging statistics, 52 reasons your company blog is worth the time and the effort. 28 little known blogging statistics. So you can see all these statistical articles are actually really helping them get those linking domains um, and external links. You can also see their page authority compared to Neil Patel is comparable, but not as high as Neil's. So 14 essential chips for, so a lot of numerical articles. Um, what's a good average landing page conversion rate in 2020? That's a good question, curiosity uh, headline. Uh, and then, it's just interesting how, how we removed our blog sidebar and increased conversion rates. That would make sense. You have a blog sidebar on every page including your landing pages, then you would be taking visitors away from the landing page into the blog. Whereas if you take it away, then you have a better conversion rate. Um, six CTA best practices to push all the right buttons for your audience. So you can see based on Impact Ben's um, top pages, their most popular pages are actually statistics pages about inbound marketing, video marketing, user experience. Um, and then they also have a great curiosity uh, headline, like what is quality content? Um, let's see, what's a good average landing page conversion rate in 2020? So that's what we can take away from the moz.com analysis of impact bend. Now let's flip over to BuzzSumo and what are their most popular pages. And then, so this one's pre a pretty viral headline, 50 high, 15 highly irresponsible things marketing managers do that cost their companies a fortune. But see, like you can look at their uh, Facebook engagement or their total engagement and it's not as high as, say, Neil Patel. So the total engagement is, say, 500, whereas with Neil Patel, it's like 5,000. So it's interesting to see the differences in, in total social engagement. Um, so, what logo styles do consumers trust most? Um, images versus no images. What should we do in our marketing emails and newsletters? Are QR codes making a comeback? So a lot of good questions that they're asking and that goes viral in their social media content. Um, you know, should you hire a web designer, web developer, or both? So that's their web content. And then when we look at the analysis, let's let it load. Um, so while we're letting it load, <clears throat> um, 
we can also save this search or create an alert about it on BuzzSumo. Okay. So it's interesting, they've, they've looked at 1,500 articles with a total of roughly 26,000 engagements, and each article gets an average of 17 engagements. So this is interesting. So Impact Bend, I'm not sure how many, how they're getting so many articles published um, each month that I guess we'd have to go back to the help section of BuzzSumo and, and see what they regard as an article. But for example, you can just look at Facebook engagements, but um, so you can see how many articles are being published over time. And then their Facebook engagement is the highest. And then it's shown network engagement by average engagement by content types. So all content um, is getting, say, an average of 17 engagements, but then you can see lists are pretty popular, followed by, a, followed by an infographic, and why posts, and a what posts. So you can see um, what is the most uh, engaging content type they have. And then the best day to publish for uh, Impact Bend is also Tuesday. And you can see that the average engagement by content length is roughly 2,000 to 3,000 words, which is the same as uh, Neil Patel. They have a lot of different domains, um, but Impact Bend, their primary domain is what gets the engagement. So what we've learned from Impact Bend is that they have a seriously large number of articles being published each month. That makes me wonder, looking at it by week. Um, and you can kind of see the same trend downward of social engagement, which is interesting. Um, from over over a year with a brief spike in, in February. So you can see that infographics might be good to integrate into our um, content as well. Lists are really popular as well for, for this audience. So that's what we've learned about Impact Bend. Now our last competitor that we aspire to is PR 2020. In they have, I would say, um, more, they have a lot of services pages and a book. Um, let's see, marketing automation is only the beginning. How algorithms and artificial intelligence will disrupt marketing forever. That's a little bit of a long title, but um, very popular. You can also see their page authority is below that of Impact Bend and um, Neil Patel. And you can kind of see um, Marketing Grove Hack Hackathon, their webinar recording was pretty popular. Um, technologies that could disrupt, disrupt part marketing as we know it. Six bullet proof ways to prevent patch writing. So it's, this is more of, you can see this more technical um, Six ways to win executive buy for in inbound marketing, marketing strategy versus sales strategy. So you can see how um, how they're more of a technical marketing company. They're they're really interesting um, 
they do inbound marketing as well, but they're, they're more focused on the technology behind marketing. So that's what I could say about PR 2020, looking at their top ranking um, pages in terms of domain and page authority and linking domains. So let's go to uh, BuzzSumo and look at their web content um, and see what has the highest Facebook engagement. Um, so they have you know, 12 questions you should ask Google Analytics every month. Um, a lot of numerical posts, 20 of the coolest marketing conferences and attend in 2020. Uh, four tips for building the best B2B email newsletter, seven ways to empower sales with HubSpot. Um, so it's really interesting. Um, 10 truths about marketing, artificial intelligence, 10 best speaker quotes from Micon, um, inbound 19 recap. So free, crazy, helpful insights for your 2020 social media strategy. So it's, so you can kind of see what's popular with them is a lot of numerical kind of listicles. Um, and then if you go into analysis for PR 2020, um, it's interesting. You can kind of see the same decline in social media engagement over time over the past year. Um, so in July, they published in July 2019, they published nine articles, but then I'm trying to see what, let's see what are, let's look at the average engagements. Okay. Total engagements. Um, not much change there, but you can see that they, they're not really by what I would say, like blogging regularly, number of articles published. So, You'd want to, that's why it's so important to have a content strategy and a content calendar to, to try and make sure you stay focused on doing content every single month, preferably four times a month. <laughs> but you can see that even some of the most well-known marketing agencies don't do that. Um, so average engagement by network, uh, Facebook, it's about 20 engagements. All content and then they're they're pretty popular with their list. Um, it's also show network engagement. And again Tuesday is a very popular day to publish and they it looks like they publish content between 0 to 2,000 words and their biggest uh, articles are roughly 2,000 words so that's what's receiving the most engagement. And they only have one domain. So you can you can kind of see um, looking through our, our competitive research um, how often people are publishing, what are the best networks to engage, um, and what are the best content types for social media engagement at least. So once we've done all this research um, then you remember, we're looking for patterns and look, our to look for topics that are shared by several of the posts. And you can also see, um, headlines, how to structure your headlines. So they draw readers in, and then these are the headlines and topics that audiences like best. And then headlines. The next section is on headlines. So how do you write a good headline? Sean D'Souza out of Australia has three questions for writing a good headline. Is it a question versus a statement? Or is it another question is, is it a problem versus a solution? And the final question is, does it bring up your curiosity? So you can look at the competitive research uh, for how to structure your headlines. So we see what I, so you can see that we've had a lot of what I would call numerical posts. Um, 
So we can go back to say uh, impact bend um, and then you can look at their content on BuzzSumo like, and then you can see a lot of numerical posts. And then you can also go back to impact bend on Moz, or this is Neil Patel, sorry, and then on Moz, and then you can see all their statistics. So number of something about something is one of what I would call the headline formulas. Another headline formula is what something can teach you about something. So how to do a competitive analysis in five easy steps is what something can teach you about something. Or you can go into Neil Patel's Digital Marketing Made Simple, a step-by-step -step guide, or Online Marketing Made Simple, a step-by-step -step guide. Uh, we can also link to some of FIA Marketing's um, blogs as well. So now you've, you've had kind of a good understanding of where your competitors sit in terms of, uh, or do they, do, do their audiences like listicles? Do their audiences prefer infographics? Um, what, what are the most popular articles on social media and what articles get the most backlinks? Now we're going to look at, at content structure, and that's our final uh, understanding in, in this process. So first, um, we'd like to introduce the context or situation, like what is the actual problem you're trying to solve, why is that problem important, and what you can do to solve it. And then the action is what I'm going through now by showing you Moz and BuzzSumo. Um, and then these are two top tools that we like to use when we're coming up with content strategy and weekly content for the blog post. And finally, result. Um, the result here is how we do this research. Um, and a takeaway from, from doing all this research is you have a better understanding of what types of blog posts to write based on your top competitors' uh, blog posts and what they've put out there um, and social media engagement. So, and finally, I want to share with you um, how to write a good headline. So we've seen a lot of good headlines from our competitors. So I like using CO Schedule's uh, free headline analy analyzer. So here you can see um, I've already had a headline history. My first try was a four-part formula for creating compelling content with Moz and BuzzSumo, and that got a 47. So the higher the number, the better. Um, my next attempt was like, okay, so that was too long, so create compelling content with Moz and BuzzSumo. That was my second try, and the, the score went up to a 59, which is pretty good. So let me try and niche it down further to create compelling content with Moz and BuzzSumo for engineers and scientists. And let's see where that headline goes now. So that actually decreases how good the headline is. Um, that's interesting because that would actually help with SEO. Um, so let's see. Um, like how 
to do competitive research with Moz and BuzzSumo. So actually that got the best headline score um, so far with a headline score of 79. So you want to play around with different um, headlines until you get it right. Because remember, 80% of people will read the headline, but only 20% will actually go into reading your actual content. So I actually like how to do competitive research with Moz and BuzzSumo the best. And so this is how you create a compelling content, compelling blog post. If you like this video, feel free to comment, um, like, and share. Thank you.